back in Barcelona. Ronald Koeman's got the rebuild on. Now, obviously, nobody wanted to lose Messi, but he does know and has identified the other players that he would let follow Messi out of the door. But there is still said to be a lifeline for the likes of Jordi Alba, Sergio Busquets and Gerard Piquet. Are there any mistakes in the players he's letting go, like Luis Suarez or Rakitic, if that is to happen? Well, look, I think everybody was quite clear that what Barcelona needed to do was, was a generational change. And so if you look at the players that have been told to go, Luis Suarez, Rakitic, um, Arturo Vidal and Samuel Umtiti, all of those are over 30 except Samuel Umtiti, who's had a couple of years of, of injury problems. Now, they've been told to look for clubs. That's not quite the same as rescinding their contracts, although I imagine there will be now negotiations to try and try and uh, depart the club on, on a free transfer. I think there was, a, there was a temptation as well. And remember when Bartomeu talked about untransferable players, he didn't mention those players that you just have. So PK, Sergio, Sergio Busquets and, and Jordi Alba who are all over 30. I think Koeman sees a place for them. I think the club would be more cautious with those players, of course, because they're youth teamers as well and, and they were worried about how to handle them. Personally, I would have kept PK as well. Uh, I'm slightly less sure about the other two, but I guess it depends on what you have in the squad. It depends on what kind of um, departures you can find for those players, if indeed you have them. And, and, and as we understand it, Koeman has told Busquets, for example, that yes, you're part of the plans. Yes, I want you here. But I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to be the first choice in that midfield pivot position. Uh, I suspect he may end up playing together with De Jong in a two with a line of three in front rather than as a midfield three. But I, I think that, look, Barcelona, truth be told, given the financial problems, are in a position where if anyone comes with a big offer for any of their players, just about, with the exception of Ter Stegen, then I think they would contemplate it. Now, Busquets, though, said to be back in training early, Shaka. Do you think that Koeman is having the right effect on some of these players who are fearing that they may not have a future or they may not be guaranteed starters at Barca next season? Well, that, that's one way to look at it. But you understand Busquets coming back early, given the disappointments uh, around Barcelona's season, and maybe he feels that, that he could have contributed more. So it's, it's kind of part and parcel for, for the position, and I don't put that down exclusively to, to, to Koeman's arrival or, or the threat of, of departure for, for Sergio Busquets. Um, he, he's just trying to get started, and I, I, I do hope more following his example. Should they bring Coutinho back, Craig? Well, I think they might have to, because he's, he's part of it. Unless, unless they loan him out again, I, I, I don't know what the plans are with him. But, but you know, just because Coutinho's had a bad time there doesn't mean that he can't be, you know, reinvigorated under a new coach. And and one of the things that Koeman has said already was his frustration at watching how, in his opinion, Barcelona did not utilise, to the best of his talents so far, Frankie de Jong. And we've seen the young man struggle to showcase the considerable talents that he's got. Uh, and the pressure of going into a club like that can get to you when crowds got on your back at the Camp Nou and you're a young man going to a new club. And so clearly Koeman has it in his mind and, and as Sid touched on with Sergio Busquets and others, that he's going to try and build things around certain players. And I think Frankie de Jong is certainly one of them that he's going to try and mould the midfield around because he certainly believes that, that Barcelona have nowhere near seen the best of him. And maybe he's got plans like that for Philip Coutinho as well. So I think it'll have to be a, a wait and see for the little Brazilian. Sid, Koeman's got previous in having a clear out, what we saw at Valencia. It didn't quite go as well. Is this any different? Well, he, he will certainly hope it's very different. Um, for those of, of our viewers who, who don't know, at, at Valencia, he took on Santi Canizades, David Albelder and Miguel Angel Angulo. The three of them uh, had been basically put on a, on a list of players that the club wanted out. And I think this is a really important point to make, by the way, is that Koeman went in to play, if you like, that, that kind of role of executioner at, at Valencia. But he did it on behalf of the club. It wasn't that he turned up, analysed his squad and decided that he wanted these three players out. He came in with the list already written for him and he played that role. To the extent that um, David Albelder and, and Santi Canitharis ended up in court against Valencia. And as you say, will he want it to end differently? Yes. Because that year, Valencia won the Copa del Rey, but they were dangerously close to relegation and Koeman was sacked before the end of the season. I have never in my life I was at that final, the Copa del Rey, in, in 2008 at the Vicente Calderon. Never in my life seen a man just win a cup look so utterly depressed and entirely isolated. No one celebrated with him. He got on the team bus on his own at the end. There was a real sense that, so what? You've won the cup. You're going to get sacked in a few days' time anyway, which happened. He was sacked, I think it was six days later. Um, and, and there was a sense as well that you know they won the Copa del Rey because that was a demonstration of the quality of the players that he had and how good they could have been 
if he had been able to do the things that he wanted to do or if he'd been able to reach the dressing room, which he wasn't able to do. Now, this situation does have some parallels, but it's not quite the same thing. OK, just to end the messy talk here, though, Sid, does it make no difference at all if Bartomeu does resign? Does it look like Messi's still going regardless? Look, I think Bartomeu is uh, a cause of this situation. Uh, I think he, he is part of the consequence, but I think he's no longer part of the solution. I think it's gone beyond him now. I don't think it's a case of saying, here, I'll resign uh, if you stay. Also, bear in mind, why would it be, given that Bartomeu would resign, but the board of directors would remain the same, the vice president would become the president, the whole situation would fundamentally not change, except that Bartomeu himself would have gone. And I think when Bartomeu suggested this, I think Lionel Messi's camp will have looked at this and thought, yeah, nice try. Uh, you know, it's an attempt to kind of bring Messi out into the open, an attempt to try and get Messi to speak up, which Messi will do, but Messi will do when it suits him, when the time is right for him. There will be some sort of public statement or interview, uh, but it won't be because Bartomeu says so. And, and it bearing, uh, you know, barring an absolute miracle now, I, I, I think Bartomeu stepping down, if indeed he does, makes absolutely no difference to Messi's determination to leave. If Messi does a U-turn now, it won't be because of the president. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.